Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today we are going to build the bottom end of my L28. All right, so as I said, I'm quite excited today. I actually get to start building the bottom end of this engine and um, putting it together. The very first thing I need to do though is I need to go through and make sure all of the um, all of the hole the bolt holes are clean. They've got good threads, and that means going through and running a tap through all of them. I only actually own a couple of bottoming taps, and they're the ones you need to use. So instead of uh, tapering at the bottom, so when you're actually cutting a thread, you use a tapered tap. A bottoming tap has a uh, the the threads go all the way down, and it's square at the base, so it can get a thread all the way to the bottom. I don't have uh, that many bottoming taps. I'm just going to use the regular taps as long as it um, goes in smoothly. It's quite important, particularly when you want to talk up um, things to a correct spec, that you've got a nice clean thread so that the, you're not getting a false torque rating on just a little bit of grot or a little something in the hole that's uh, sort of creating that little bit of extra tension that's not actually to that proper tension. So, all right, let's uh, start. Tapping some holes. All right, threads are cleaned up. There was very little uh, wrong with them. As I said, the threads were, were in quite good condition anyway. I just ran the tap through to, uh, for a bit of peace of mind and to make sure it's all, uh, all perfect. So uh, now I'm going to go in and install the uh, crankcase breather, which is this uh, weird looking uh, bit of fly screen that's bunched up. That, uh, that just tucks in down, down in, in here inside the block. And then I just have to install this cover and um, we can move on. All right, the, uh, the breather screen's installed. So that means it's time to start doing the, uh, the bearings. And to start with, I've got to put the bearings in. I've got to clean out uh, everything immaculately, get everything perfect, make sure the bearings are clean and insert all the bearings so we can start getting ready to do our final clearances. Okay, so the bottom row of bearings are now in place, or actually I suppose they are the top, but yeah, the, the bearings in the case are there, and now I've got these uh, main caps that I need to install bearings to. Now, one of the first things we need to do, um, they're saying, is to just make sure that this mating surface is perfectly flat, and that means getting a, um, a, a very fine flat file and just lightly running over the top, just to make sure that there's no burrs, there's no nothing there that's going to catch. So I'm gonna run the file over these and fit all the bearings. And that brings me to the next step is um, checking the, uh, the oil clearance. Basically, there's, uh, once these are fit and you have the, uh, the crank in the block and you bolt it down, there needs to be a slight gap between the crank and the bearing so the oil can fit in between. Um, but you don't want too much of a gap, you just want to have the right amount. And a lot of uh, at-home guys will do it with plastic gauge, which is basically, it's a, um, it's a piece of wax, it's a set thickness, a set size, like a, it almost looks like a hair of wax, that you lie a little piece across, install the crank, pull the main caps, and watch it crush. And then when you pull it out carefully, you actually have a little, uh, a little gauge, it squishes the wax and you have a, a, a little uh, gauge and you sort of work out how wide the squished, ga the, uh, squished wax is and the wider it is, the finer the gap. And that's one way of doing it. I'm not going to use plastic gauge. I'm gonna use the method that, uh, that Neil showed me in, uh, in LA when I was doing my 911 engine, which is basically I'm gonna put the bearings in, I'm gonna put the main caps in, I'm gonna talk them up. Yes, I'm gonna talk them up. Uh, and um, and then internally measure the uh, the bearings while there's nothing in there, and measure it against the crank and get my clearances that way. Um, I like that method. Uh, I'll be doing the same with the rod. So uh, all right, let's start uh, installing bearings and getting some measurements and see how we go. So 
So now I've got these all in here, I need to go through and talk them up, and they need to be talked up to uh, 33 to 40 foot-pounds of torque. That's the final uh, torque rating. I'm gonna talk them up to 33, and um, the way I'm gonna do that, using a torque wrench. Those, uh, most of you guys know what a torque wrench is or have some idea of what it is, and um, basically, this, this particular style, you um, wind up the spring inside, and as you get close, it'll sort of, you, you'll, you'll get close, and then it'll click when you get to, get to the right torque setting. We have that, and um, I did lots of backwards and forwards about getting some really expensive torque wrenches and things like that, but the main thing is, very expensive torque wrenches are very good in having a, a being very accurate, at least when they're new, to uh, the exact spec. The thing is, is over time, the springs can, ch can, can change, they can slack off or whatever, and the accuracy can change slightly. So what, I, what, what I've done is I've got, to, I've got some, some torque wrenches from Supercheap, I've got a range um, that I use, and I'm quite happy with the results I can get from these, particularly because what I, what I do is I've got, um, I've got the regular torque wrench, and then I've got this, um, this, this sort of cool little adapter I've got from them as well. It's a digital um, digital adapter. So I can just attach this to, to my regular ratchet and then I can use this regular ratchet becomes a torque wrench. So I can check, I can go with uh, the manual torque wrench and then I can back it up with this so I have, I've cross-referenced, I've made sure they're still both within spec, at least they're both reading similar and I'm comfortable enough with that. So let's go through now. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to talk these up um, first to about 15 foot pounds, so sort of about halfway, and then I'm gonna go through and talk them through to the 33 foot pounds each. Um, and then we can start measuring them and seeing if they're within spec and compare them to the, uh, the crank. So, torque wrenching time. Okay, so I put everything in and talked it up and, uh, and I measured everything vertically all the way through and, um, and then measured it against the crank and I have the clearances need to be between 0.033 of a millimetre and 0.081 and we have 0.06 all the way through. They're all super consistent. Uh, the crank is really consistent, so I'm very happy with how that is. So now I've got to pull it all apart again and um, look at putting this crank in. Uh, next step is to go through and install the rear main seal onto the crank. And then I'm gonna go through with the assembly lube and um, lube up all the bearings and all the journals. Using the assembly lube, it's just making sure that uh, nothing is dry when the car is first started up. It's all well lubricated and um, it's not gonna wear anything out. So um, let's get into it. All right, that was the uh, the most critical one to get in to start with. Um, getting this end cap in, it's got these uh, two sort of uh, seals that go down the side, making sure the rear, end, uh, rear main seal is is straight and square with the end of the block. And uh, there was a bit of seal in the bottom and stuff. Basically, um, just getting that right was the uh, the first big step. And uh, and I've just just sort of finger tightened these up for now. So now I just need to go through and put some uh, assembly lube on the rest of these uh, main caps and bolt the rest of this crank down.
right, the crank is in and it's all talked up and um, and it spins nice and freely, which is a um, which is something you need to make sure you check. It's not getting stuck or anything. It spins, so that's uh, that's good. I'm happy. Everything is working. Everything's in spec. With the talking of the bolts. Um, same as every engine, pretty much. The, the, uh, the, the general way is you just sort of start from the middle and work your way out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, like that. One of the things that um, Neil taught me at Performance Developments that, uh, that I took away from, from that is, is when you're talking, make sure you're always doing it in, in a smooth, steady motion. Don't, uh, don't sort of crank it on until it clicks. Like, you know, get a nice, smooth, even motion and, uh, and you'll have a nice, even uh, torque spread. Um, and also, um, you have to make sure you lube up the bolts. So, you know, in some ways, I, I always thought you might have put some Loctite or something in them and that's not what you do at all. Actually, you put some grease on the threads and underneath the caps so that they flow smoothly. So again, like I said with the um, tapping out the holes is, there's no contamination, you get a nice, smooth, clean torque, and um, once they're torqued up to spec, they should be perfect. So, um, all right, cranks in, moving on. Okay, my next job is to measure ring gap. So, measuring ring gap means putting the rings into the block, and then using the piston, slide them down inside the block, about three inches, and then running through with a feeler gauge. All right, all the rings gapped out nicely and now I've got the, um, the pistons, I've got them clamped in the vise here just between a couple of bits of wood just to keep it still while I install the rings. Um, I don't actually have a, uh, a proper ring expander, um, which makes it a lot easier and a lot less likely to damage the rings, but done one already just using a pair of uh, circlip pliers and uh, they make it a lot easier. So uh, yeah, just using these, they, um, they fill the spot. Uh, um, so let's install some rings. All right, rings are all on and they're all aligned. Um, you have to make sure you align them. They're all offset um, so that um, they don't line up um, in theory. So it doesn't uh, let as much compression through the, the, the gap if they're all lined up on the same side um, or oil from the bottom. And uh, yeah, so now we need to go through, put all the bearings in them, assembly lube, and then we can put them in the block. Yeah. All right, the bottom end is together. I actually, uh, all the pistons went in quite easily and um, I got my first experience building an engine at all um, with uh, performance developments only a few weeks ago. This is my first uh, solo attempt at a, a bottom end and I'm really happy. So it's all done. Next week, I'm gonna have to get into that head and get the, uh, the head assembled. So, uh, and then hopefully we can put this whole thing together. In any case, that is definitely all the time I have for this week, so that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff.
Hey guys, the rules for the Bathurst 500 changed for 1967 after the previous year's domination by the Minis. This change favoured the larger and thirstier Fords and Holdens. The Minis were quicker through the corners and could theoretically finish the race on a single tank. This year the XR Falcon GT took out the race, which surprised many considering it was new and unproven, especially compared to the well-regarded and more expensive Alpha GTV. Mount Panorama favoured power of its long straights, confirming the adage there is no substitute for cubic inches. The Falcons took out first and second, with an Alpha, Minis and a Datsun 1000 taking out wins in the other classes. All right, another week down and the engine is coming together. I'm uh, really happy with how that uh, went today and uh, I managed to get the whole bottom end together. Next week, hopefully I can tackle that head. Um, but uh, all right, well, that's it. Yep, so same as usual, please help us out by buying a, uh, this is- Get, get some stylish uh, yeah, apparel. This is, um, what is that? That is- um, Silicon. Silicon, silicon. I don't care what's on, they can't see it. I don't people think you've got food down your front. Anyway. <laughs> In any case, as always, please like and subscribe and all that jargon, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Okay. See you guys. Took out the race, which is the Alpha GT5. Hey. Hey. Alpha GT5. V! It's so good, except for the V. It's not a Roman numeral. <laughs> it looks like a Roman numeral. <laughs>